Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and this is an episode of Debunking where we have a look at viral videos from across the internet and see what is true and what is false. Now so many of you sent me links to the pink sauce videos and the pink sauce controversy and asked me to take a look at it. So here we go. Chef P is definitely a very hated character on the internet, I am quite sure before the video has even been viewed people will be currently typing negative comments about her and about her sauce if you have never heard of chef p she made a ranch type dressing that is pink in color she shared videos of it on her instagram back in mid 2021 saying it was organic and it had no food coloring and back then she called it pink ranch instead of pink sauce it didn't get a whole lot of views and nothing really happened but then Mid this year, she shared some videos of it to TikTok and it went viral. You know, TikTok been blowing up. We got like 6 million views in less than a week. So naturally people were curious, what is making this sauce so pink if you're not using food coloring? What does it taste like? So she decided to sell the sauce for $20 a bottle. And it seems like after that, everything rapidly went wrong. So let's have a look at all the claims about this sauce and see which ones are true and which ones are false. So firstly, there were claims about shipping problems. The first batch appears to have been shipped out in thin plastic packaging and because of that, some of the bottles arrived damaged or even burst. Look at this! For that, Chef P apologized and offered a refund or a new bottle and subsequent batches were sent out in cardboard boxes instead. So yes, that was a true claim. There was issues with the packaging early on and they seem to have been fixed fairly quickly, but it was a true claim. So we'll put a tick there as to yes for the packaging issues. Moving on to the next claim. So first of all, 444 serving, but the serving size is one tablespoon. That's around 28 cups. That label is not correct, which means is anything else on the label actually correct? There is nothing in the label about refrigeration, nor is there an expiration date on the label. Vinegar is also spelled incorrectly. All right, so there was a few things there. Let's pull up the label and take a look. They're right, the number of serves in this packaging is definitely wrong. As for the expiry date, it's not here, but you can see a sticker with an expiry date on the lids of some of the bottles in the review videos. So that's fine as long as it's got an expiry date on it somewhere. If we look back at the nutrition label, there are other problems here too. Like there is zero grams of every type of fat, but that somehow adds up to one gram of total fat. And it says there's three grams of total carbohydrate, but there's 11 grams of sugars. That 11 grams should be part of this total. So it can't be less than 11, it can't be three. And if we look at the fat, fat has nine calories per gram. There's one gram of fat, so that would equal nine calories. And for the carbs, let's go with the 11 grams, not the three. There are four calories per gram of carbs, so that would be 44 calories. There's no protein, so zero calories there. And that adds up to 53 calories per serve, not 90 calories. So yes, that is a fair criticism of the source. The labeling was completely inaccurate and not right. And this was Chef P's response. My apologies, I'm only human, I'm not perfect. It's about 30 servings per container. We fixed the issue. You guys will not be receiving pink sauce bottles with the bad label. Apologizing is a great start, but I can see with the new label that she's flashing around there, it still says 90 calories. I can't read all the details, but I can tell the nutritional information is still totally incorrect. So if you've made an error on the label, maybe check everything with a fine tooth comb before reprinting. Okay, on to the next claim. Look at the sauce. Look at it. Yeah, it's pink. It's pink sauce. Now look at it again. Why is it pinker? Why does the color keep changing? If you ain't got the recipe straight, if your formula ain't formulated properly yet, you ain't ready for market. Chef P's initial response to this was, the color didn't change, just the lighting. 
Now while I agree lighting can have a dramatic effect on what the color looks like and so can what settings you put the camera on as you can see here you can get a bright pink all the way through to a pale pink from the same photo depending what your settings are but it does change the look of the whole photo not just the source and Chef P later said that she had made changes to the recipe a lot of people said they wanted the bright pink sauce not a pale pink sauce so we'll tick that one as a valid thing the next claim or rather a question that people are asking is is Chef P even a chef well I will let her answer that one for herself so I asked <laughs> my friend would he hire me to be a private chef and the next day he called me he was like yo you got a jacket and then I was like hell no nah, but I could go get one I like the store right. right across the street from my house so like uniform the real truth I didn't go to culinary school I am a private chef, which means that I do more elaborate, intimate dining situations, you know? Um, I am a mixologist. I am a certified bartender. My first uh, private dining client, like his friends that uh, I went to go cook for him and his girlfriend, I literally still cook for them till this day. Oh, okay. my first client. All right. Three so years ago. Unfortunately, there is no accrediting board that looks at whether someone is a chef or whether they're not. If you want to be a doctor or a nurse or anything like that, there's a board that accredits your qualifications and says, yes, you can work in that field. But that doesn't happen with chefs. So if her boss wanted to let her buy a chef's jacket and call herself a chef with no training and no prior experience, you can actually do that, which will be the frustration of every chef listening who actually has a qualification and years of experience but there you go that's how it is so does that affect pink sauce well possibly yes because had she done training she may have had a bit more knowledge on food labeling and food laws she may not have it depends on the course as to how deeply it goes into that or if it even goes into that at all now the next claim is more to do with the actual recipe is the recipe itself fake. In order for mayonnaise to get that really creamy, thick texture and that opaque white color, there needs to be an emulsifier. I'm really good with dressings. So I was thinking there has to be mayo or at the very least mustard in it. And then I came across this video, which you see something that looks an awful lot like mayo. And if you look at the ingredients list, there is nothing that looks like this listed here. Even if this is not mayo, at the very least, she is using something that's not here to give it that particular color and consistency. One thing was certain, this was not the sauce that Chef P is using. The color is purple, not the Kirby pink that we were hoping for. Dragon fruit, while it provides color, is a watery fruit and left us with a runny broth. But this sauce always appears as a creamy sauce. It's opaque and it has a similar consistency to honey mustard, ranch, or mayonnaise. And yet the ingredients list on the package contains nothing that would create a sauce that looks like this. Chef P uses mayonnaise as the base color to get that Pepto business small pink. I mixed our buddy Hidden Valley Ranch, hashtag not spawn, and the dragon fruit together. So none of them managed to figure out a recipe that used just the ingredients on the label to come up with a nice thick pink sauce. So they came up with the conclusion that she must have just been using mayo and mixing in some of the dragon fruit powder to give it that pink color. Normally I can look at a recipe and tell you whether it's real or fake straight off without even trying but this one uses something that I have never tried to use in a dressing before which is dragon fruit so I'm going to have to do some experiments. The main ingredients in ranch and mayo are oil and water but they don't mix together very well. To make an emulsion of the two you would normally blend the water and then slowly drizzle in the oil slowly being the key you can't just dump the oil and water into the blender and turn it on or it's not going to create an emulsion this is an emulsion of just oil and water and see how it now looks white and thicker and creamier than water does but this is not a stable emulsion over the next hour or so it will settle back out into the layers of oil and water now to solve that problem you can use an emulsifier and that helps keep the emulsion stable it keeps all those little droplets separate so the oil doesn't just come back together i've got three emulsions here 
This one is just the water and oil with nothing else added to it and you can see it's already starting to separate back out. This one has a quarter of a teaspoon of egg yolk in it. Egg yolk contains lecithin, which is an emulsifier, which is why a lot of mayonnaises and sauces have eggs in them in order to keep it all together. Egg is not listed as an ingredient on her sauce though, so that is not what she used. To this next one, I added a quarter of a teaspoon of soy lecithin, which is an option if you don't want to use eggs. And you'll see this on ingredients lists as emulsifier E322. Again, that's not on her ingredient list, so not what she used. To this one, I've added a quarter of a teaspoon of mustard, which is a possibility in the pink sauce because she has spices listed and doesn't say what they are. And finally, in this one, you can probably guess what's in it. Before I mixed the oil with the water, I added a quarter of a teaspoon of dragon fruit powder to the water. Just one hour later, I could see that the mustard and the dragon fruit were starting to separate already. So I decided to make up a mixture using the fresh dragon fruit and the oil and make an emulsion that way and see what happens with that one. While we wait to find out, let's do a treasure hunt. Can you find Nutella, a sieve and test tubes? If you like hunting for things, today's sponsor, June's Journey, is a game set in the 1920s, where you have to hunt for hidden objects and clues in order to solve a murder mystery. Some things are harder to find than others. If you can't find something in a scene, make sure you turn up your screen brightness because that makes it much easier to see what's in the shadows. And also you can zoom in on the screen and then it lets you know if the thing you're looking for is in that section of the screen or not. With the coins you earn in the game, you get to decorate your island however you like. Wouldn't it be great if you could plant manicured gardens and rearrange them this easily in real life? I'll put a link in the description to where you can download June's Journey and you can play it on iOS, Android or Facebook games. And once you've done the tutorial on the game, if you come back here and click on the link in the description again, they will send you this $16.95 decoration for free for you to put on your island. Okay, back to our emulsions. Three hours later and the fresh dragon fruit and oil has formed a very stable emulsion. It hasn't separated at all. The freeze dried has some separation, possibly it needs more dragon fruit powder and the mustard is not great with that small amount of mustard. You're gonna need more than that. The soy lecithin is very stable, even with that tiny amount, which is why it's so popular. And the egg yolk is pretty good, but it probably needs more egg yolk than I put in it. And of course, the straight oil and water has separated completely. So now let me run that test again with two teaspoons of freeze dried dragon fruit. I only used a quarter of a teaspoon last time. Look at that. Wow, so it seems like there is something in the dragon fruit, probably the pectin, that is acting as an emulsifier. Even four hours later, it is still stable, and so is the one that used the fresh dragon fruit. So that means that she doesn't need to list an emulsifier on her ingredients list because the dragon fruit is the emulsifier. So to everyone who said that her sauce was impossible, it's actually entirely possible just with the ingredients that she had listed. Of course, I've only made it using dragon fruit oil and water, so that's gonna taste pretty bland and not very nice. If you want it to taste like a ranch, you're gonna have to add in the rest of the ingredients like some powdered garlic and maybe a bit of mustard, definitely vinegar, some honey, some lemon juice, I think she had some chili in there. How your sauce tastes is going to vary completely depending on how much and what you add here as far as the flavorings. I'll put the proportions that I used on the How to Cook That website. Once you've added your dragon fruit in there, you need to slowly drizzle in the oil with the blender running so that you can create that emulsion. And then you get a really thick, opaque, pink sauce. No mayonnaise, no emulsifiers, just the ingredients she had listed on the bottle. Let's give it to Dave to taste. Well, they weren't uh, kidding about it being pink sauce, were they? That is uh, a very 80s hot pink. Here we go. Give it a good dunk, good soaking. Mm. Is it sort of a bit ranch, like a ranch sauce? Tiny, tiny little bit spicy. A little bit sort of westerny type of sauce. It's okay. Let's look at the next claim. 
I suspect that mayo may be acting as more than just an ingredient. You notice the yellow capped squeeze bottles that the pink sauce comes packaged in? Why wouldn't your pink sauce have, oh, uh, I don't know, a pink lid? Yellow is nowhere to be found in her brand, unless your main ingredient is mayonnaise and you happen to have a ton of these yellow capped bottles just sitting around. Repurpose the old mayo bottles, wipe off the label, boom! You've got yourself a brand new product. If you're rushing a new product to market, you really don't have time to wait for custom pink lids to be made. You just have to buy bottles that were already available, like these bottles with yellow lids and the seals in them. If you have a look at the review videos, you can see that the bottles are sealed when people are getting them. So it's sealed. Okay, there's no air coming in or out of it. They are definitely not reused mayonnaise bottles. That claim is completely false. The next claim is a lot more serious and it has to do with the safety of the product. Oh, and this is definitely a serious announcement. Do not eat the pink sauce. Do not eat that sauce. Read up on botulism right now. And Chef Pie, Carly, suspend all orders immediately. Well, everyone in digital commentary land is out here telling you all the reasons that consuming the product is dangerous, which, let me be clear, it absolutely is. You should not buy this stuff and definitely don't consume it. Now, a lot of the fears around pink sauce came from an interview with Ben Chapman from North Carolina University, where he said, In food like this, when you see low acid foods like raw garlic or dragon fruit being put in a high oil content, We've seen similar products lead to botulism in the past without any acidification of those low acid foods. The real key to his statement there are the words without any acidification. Now, yes, there have been cases of people getting botulism where they've chopped up garlic and put it in oil to use it as garlic oil. But that is not what she is making. You can buy garlic aioli at the shops and you can have garlic flavors in all different sources and there isn't the risk of getting botulism. So why is that? Well, it's all to do with the acid level. If you have a pH of 4.6 or less, the Clostridium botulinum spores cannot grow and make the toxin that causes botulism. So if it is acidic, then you are fine. Now, an acid level of 4.6, if we have a look at a pH scale, 4.6 is not that high. A tomato would come in at four and coffee would come in at five. So sort of halfway between a tomato and a coffee, if you can think of it that way. Now, of course, water and the oil that she's using starts out as about a seven at the neutral right in the middle there. But then if you look on the ingredients list, we're adding vinegar, which is of course an acid, and lemon juice, which is an acid. And on the ingredients, you've also got citric acid listed, which is acid. So depending how much of that you add, you are shifting it down the scale so that you have a lower pH and making it more acidic. Now, I don't know what proportions of ingredients Chef P used, but if she used a standard mayonnaise type recipe or a ranch type recipe, it's going to be sitting down at a pH of around your three and a half to four. So very much in the safe zone and no issue for botulism. Now, I don't know, I don't have her sauce, so I can't test it. But what I do know is a lot of people ate this sauce and a lot of people reviewed it and there were no cases of botulism reported. So this is not something that you can say she was going to kill people with her sauce no in fact if her sauce had those acids in it there was no risk of that that wasn't an issue but if you're familiar with pink sauce you'll know that there was quite a lot of reports of people getting sick from having pink sauce i mean just look at these video titles the pink sauce is killing people tiktok's pink sauce hospitalizes 13 year old and a tiktok pink sauce nearly hospitalized me but when you watch those videos, none of them are about personal accounts or stories of a person eating pink sauce and getting sick. They are actually just clickbait trying to get views based on pink sauce and are talking about pink sauce while gaming or doing other things, but the person who made the video has not got sick. There was only one post I could find on Reddit by Mama Wolf saying that her 13-year-old daughter had got sick and was in the hospital.
If we search for the user Mama Wolf, she no longer exists, which makes it very likely that this was a fake post and not a real post. There was also another guy who faked his own death with the cause of death being eating pink sauce and then later owned up to the fact he was still alive. I'm not dead, so first and foremost, I want to say sorry if I scared y'all. I mean, that was my intent, but like not like this. Uh, second off, I want to say to Chef P, sorry if this scared you at all or impacted your business in any way. That was never my intent. I have searched and searched and apart from those two false accounts, I cannot find any accounts of people getting sick from eating pink sauce. Now lots of people videoed themselves eating it and reviewed it and none of them came back and said that it made them sick. So to the claim of the sauce making people sick or even killing people, that is a false accusation. Now on to the next claim, which is that Chef P herself has acted unprofessionally towards one of her customers, specifically Ali, who did a review on the product and with all of the storm around saying people got sick from it, decided to send it for testing. Am I going to die? Is it safe? I would be so interested to sending this to a food safety um, testing lab. And I think it's like $300. I'm willing to send this to be tested. Now, I actually think that was a fair thing to do because of all of the rumors that were circulating around at the time. But unfortunately, she didn't send the bottle unopened. She'd already opened it. She'd already stuck her finger in it and you can't send something for testing at that stage. She's never actually released the results from it. So I'm assuming there was nothing untoward in it. However, she did go on a talk show with Chef P. You have contacted me and I could have turned around and I'm not a hateful You're person. You're saying that you contacted me. No, I'm saying you I didn't never contacted received, me. Okay, but why would I contact someone who's fabricating something on the but internet? nothing You're, was fabricated. To be honest, you're not special. You're not special. I think I'm gonna have to agree with that claim. That was not a good way to speak to a customer. And Ali, if you are watching, you are special. I actually think you handled yourself with amazing maturity and calmness in what can only be described as a very biased interview. So well done to you. I think you came out <laughs> looking great at the end of that. So back to Pink Sauce. Were there mistakes made on Chef P's behalf? Yes, there definitely were. But was that then escalated, exaggerated and taken to the level of false claims and possibly defamation? Yes, I think there was too. And unfortunately, once that internet churning wheel of hate starts, it's very hard to slow it down and same with misinformation. So I actually don't know how she is still smiling and coping after six months of pile on. I think that she's actually an amazingly strong person to be able to cope with that. She's actually just signed a deal with a sauce company to make her pink sauce. And because of the mountain of negativity and misinformation that she has been subjected to, I actually hope that it goes really well for her. With thanks to my patrons for your unbelievably amazing support and encouragement, I really appreciate it. And thanks also to June's Journey for sponsoring the video. The download link is below. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.